When HARP is destroyed, this weather phenomenon is going to increase at least tenfold from what it is now. And HARP will be destroyed. All the HARP facilities will be destroyed. And the seas will be knocked right out of their basins shortly after that. So you can't blame what's happening on HARP once it's destroyed. Neither will men say that a government is doing it. And nations will be perplexed, distressed. HARP will be destroyed off the face of the earth and then the conspiracies around harp won't make sense in fact all the conspiracies will run out of options at that time which will cause massive confusion you see it's kind of comfortable knowing if you know the cause of something you can still walk around in your comfort but when you don't know the cause of something that makes people go into a panic I normally don't give out any information so long as there's a theory out there on the internet and it has to die before I say anything because if I say something at the wrong time, it'll get lumped in with the conspiracy theorists. It'll get lumped in with somebody else's theory. And so I wait until certain things die so that uh, you can hear the small, tiny piece of truth that I have in certain areas. And if you receive it, you remember it. The weather, Tatum, can I discuss the weather? Actually, we're going to take a break and I will discuss the weather. Hey, we're going a long time today. Let's do a weather. Let's do a weather update when I get back because everybody wants to know. Water is going to be a problem. You guys remember when I said droughts and floods at the same time? I said that on Pastor Paul for a long time ago that we would have droughts and floods at the same time. And I knew it didn't make sense at the time, but are you starting to see what that means? But this, this only precedes something a little more disastrous, which is the reason why COT has a water mission. It has a water mission, but everything is, is uh, Everything is uh, being reorganized, as it would seem, and some things. And we'll discuss that when we get back. Awesome. You're still there. Weather phenomena. Well, one thing is for sure. We're certainly getting, uh, we are receiving very diverse sets of weather. Globally, everything is, everything is shifting from south to north at present is what's happening there's a shift in weather from south to north um what does that mean that means the equatorial patterns are shifting north which could cause a heat event that nobody wants it could also cause instabilities to the point where cold northern air would uh, actually begin to penetrate the united states causing a snow event shortly thereafter that makes no sense to have snow in the desert but i told you guys don't be surprised if you see snow in arizona uh, in the upcoming months don't be shocked because these patterns are certainly um, outrageous now through atmosphere compression we have a lowering of the upper atmosphere is going closer to the surface and the jet stream is dropping higher winds are going to be something everybody's going to have to contend with um, in essence, very bad wind events will happen now. I, I, I um, am inclined to believe, and I, I can't go into specifics, but when something begins to pass the earth, and when everybody sees this, and it really intrigues people, once it electrifies portions of our atmosphere, the jet stream... Uh, the upper atmosphere is going to get pretty heavy. The Anybody know how hot the ionosphere is? Anybody out there know how hot it is? It's pretty hot. Um, uh, it's really hot. 
We're, we're talking thousands of degrees. But the reason why the heat is not felt, certainly where satellites and things occupy, is because it, it's, it's, there are not enough molecules to carry the heat to certain objects, right? So it's hot, but there are not a lot of molecules up there. All that's going to change. And as um, materials get introduced into the upper atmosphere, there'll be more and more molecules for that heat. What happens, it's going to be like the Earth will be in tin foil wrapped around it, heated up by the sun, making for miserable conditions on the face of the Earth. Miserable conditions. You guys remember, uh, I believe it was two years ago, when I was talking about, oh, and they really got to me over this, I said, listen, some places are going, and it's it's in the archives somewhere, Pastor Paul's, I do believe. Um, and I, I said that on Pastor Paul's again. I said it here on COT that uh, we would see temperatures of about 125 degrees. And everybody said, no way in the world that's going to happen, 125 degrees. Are you kidding? But we will experience that, and they have portions of that in India. The problem is the southern, the, the equatorial patterns are still shifting, which means that type heat or the dryness that's just incalculable um, will, will take root. And they are trying to mitigate. They're trying to mitigate this. They are really trying to mitigate this. Um, they're not trying to make it happen. They're trying to mitigate this. And it's not working. One cent, you're having problems with COT. The player's going in and out. It'll be worldwide. Salt water intrusion will be world. You see, there's a problem with the water. It's heating up. The water is heating up. The Earth's crust is heating up. And of course, when the crust heats up, all the water starts to evaporate. Sinkholes are forming in the ocean, too. Uh, and um, certainly near specific subduction zones, sinkholes are forming, sucking up the water, causing these whirlpools that uh, could, could just take a ship under. But it's also releasing contaminants into the ocean. The oceans are being poisoned from the inside out because gases are being introduced. And... Um, the, the, our, our plankton is, is about to die. It's dying off. So the entire ecosystem is, is being affected by what's happening here. And there's nothing anybody can really do to stop it. They can have a thousand meetings and everything else. It's not going to stop what's happening. We've gone over the edge. You know, here's, can I, can I explain something to you guys? Something you may not have thought about. The earth just like your body is an automated system, okay? Automated system. So we have weather phenomenon patterns, but it's recycling things in the earth. Every element on this earth had a function. Trees have a function, right? They breathe carbon and, and emit oxygen. So whether you believe it or not, everything has a function. Well, we inhabit most of the land masses now. We've changed the face of the earth. We've, we've actually not smartly uh, dealt with certain things and because of greed. You wouldn't believe what the surface of the earth actually looks like. We, we've messed up quite a few things, but every environment that we set up, we must then take control over, right? So we interrupt the natural course of earth and we have to, kind of like medicines, right? You take a medicine to get rid of one problem, but it causes 16 other problems. And so you have to go back and get medicine for the other problems. Well, that's what happens with the earth, right? So we've taken over all these land masses and we've interrupted the, we've interrupted the natural processes of earth. But we have not learned well enough how to replace certain things that we took out. Because we learn by trial and error and everything can't be calculated. Through the findings, they now understand that uh, we've really gone too far, what we've done, and, and now the Earth is going through um, th this phase because we've knocked things off balance. We've actually knocked things off balance. Well, while that balance might seem ludicrous to a lot of people, 
is because they don't understand how uh, weather, what the, the role that weather plays, how oxygen is, is um, important in the atmosphere and levels have to be maintained. Even acidic rain is important, right? But what we've done is cause that we have really caused an imbalance by not having the knowledge enough to take care of things and money being greed. You know, we could have gone to, we actually could, there, there are ways to extract power out of the atmosphere where we wouldn't have to have nuclear power plants. There's a way, power plants produce way too much waste. What do you think they do with the waste, folks? Spent rods from nuclear power plants. You know what they do? They stick them in mountains. You know how long they'll be irradiated, right? And we, they didn't share this because they knew that the public would be outraged and say, nope, you guys got to find a better way. Ask questions like that. So now we have mountains in North America filled full of radioactive waste. Well, what happens if a missile hits one of those things? One strategic, well-placed missile can contaminate the entire northern hemisphere by the USA. They, we don't need a nuclear explosion. All somebody has to do is discharge that waste. You don't need a nuclear explosion. See? So now they're having meetings and people have tried to capitalize on this stuff. But see, this, this weather phenomenon is also happening on other planets. We just happen to live on this one, right? The problem is we have stuck waste in the earth. And now when this process takes place, guess what? It could potentially be exposed. It really could. We've upset the balance of the planet through greed largely through a lot of nuclear waste. Nobody knows how to get, how do you get rid of nuclear waste? I would have launched it into the sun, to be honest. All those space programs, I would have launched everything right to the sun. I would have, we make enough missiles anyway, why not make one and launch it directly into the sun? If they launch it into the sun, no problem, right? That would be the end of that. Get rid of nuclear waste. You know what they're scared of? You guys know what they're scared of? If you begin to take minerals and things from the earth, they know for facts. See, they know about physics. And they know that the earth has to maintain a, a proper ratio of components in it. Whether it's radioactive or not, it's always been here. They, they are scared to death of upsetting that. They don't want the earth to lose its mass. Now, while that mouse may sound crazy, that right? sounds absolutely ludicrous. But the earth is losing its mass through our mistakes, that's just like through nuclear tests, we blew big holes in the ozone. And you wouldn't believe how many people that killed, not the nuclear explosion, but the radiation coming through the ozone. There are areas still on Earth off limits to humans, or you'll be microwaved if you go into certain areas of Earth. You don't know that either, do you? There are certain areas off limits, you cannot go there, no life exists there. Because if you go there, you're gonna be microwaved by the sun's energy. It goes right through the atmosphere directly to the surface of Earth and has caused it to be a wasteland. Nothing lives in these places. One minute and you'll be cooked. One minute and you're cooked. But they didn't tell you that the ozone holes are moving, right? You have to understand fluid dynamics to understand this in the atmosphere, but they're moving. There's no way to control how it shifts. Listen, if there was a pole shift, if the earth began to shift, that ozone hole would then expose, only the Lord knows what nation would be exposed to this hole. Now, just imagine this. These regions right now are not inhabited, but if the earth began to tilt its axis and the atmosphere stayed the same, then some continent is going to be a victim of that hole. And then whatever continent is under that hole, it's not going to survive. It's going to burn up. You know what the only safe place is from that? Underground. Even though the ozone is, is, is uh, fractured to a large degree and holes do appear and then go away, you have to go deep underground and the protection of the Earth's crust would protect you from those rays. You have to go underground to protect yourself. 
from the sun's emissions. That was all that radiation would not be filtered. It would go directly to the surface of the earth and the only safe place is underground. It would begin, if it hit the oceans, it would cause steam to come off the oceans in less than a minute. The air would be full of mist. Mist. The air would be full of mist, fog all over the place. It would be very difficult to believe, breathe near any coastlines because humidity would be 100%. Can you imagine 100% on the coastlines? 100% saturation in the atmosphere on the coastlines. No rain, just evaporation. You wouldn't be able to breathe. Temperatures at about 105 to 120 degrees on all coasts. That would be horrific. This is one of the events that will likely happen. You never hear anybody discussing this. In other words, our oceans will be literally microwaved, boiled. Boiled. And it'll be 100% humidity on the coastlines with atmospheric temperatures of about 110 to 120 degrees. So then everybody would be forced to go to higher altitude. But then they pose a risk of being fried themselves. Cities would spontaneously burn if the, 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 the continent drifted under these ozone holes. And do you know this is a, this is a, a, a prioritized, this is a high priority problem. High priority. They know these events are going to take place, but the weather phenomena is the first step in this. The weather phenomena happened because of volcanic activity, just so you know. You see, about six years ago, they noticed that uh, internally in the Earth, activity began. It, it got very active inside the Earth. Well, let's see. That was about 11 years ago. 11 years ago. About 11 years ago. People were warning. Experts warned. You know, this is going to get worse. Then they began to hunt down the safe places. At first, they had a fear of the water. Now they're going to have to deal with volcanism and the water. But now they have a compound problem of ozone issues, and they don't know what's happening. You know, not, not more than two weeks ago, there was a, a um, event on the East Coast, an ozone event. Did you guys hear about that? You didn't hear about that, did you? When you're dealing with underground bases, it is important to divert water. So if they were going to seek, seek uh, shelter on the ground, the first thing they would have to do is divert the water. Take it away from surveillance, re-divert it down below, put it in storage tanks so they would drain everything dry. It would appear as the water levels would be going down, and then, of course, the salt water would take the place. Take the place. So that would mean a lot of explosions on the ground to put the plumbing in. These shallow earthquakes, fracking operations. There are plumbing operations that have taken place, and they said it was fracking, not plumbing, but it was actually plumbing. So they had to re-divert the water into water chambers underneath the ground for, for the sake of the basis. Because, see, they can make a tunnel and burn the rock, and actually burn the rock with high heat, and the walls are like glass, so that makes a perfect tube for water to flow through. It's already glass. You don't have to put pipes and things down there. Certain types of boring machines do this, and so they make water tunnels to the underground bases. But they would have to divert that water, and the only way to do that is to come up with some sort of cover story that the water is somehow evaporating, diverting the water and draining the lakes. They would take, for instance, the Great Lakes and put all that stuff in bladders so if anybody ever saw, they'd see them shipping the water to another country. They don't care about that. But it wouldn't be shipped to another country. They would be real slick about it. Once they got the water on the ocean, they would do what's called a, they would do a switch, pumping the water into uh, naval bases under the ocean floor. All you see is a bladder on the top side, so they drain out the fresh water, filling the bladders up with seawater, get out of your sight, dump it all in the ocean again, and come back. Isn't that something? But they can make some real money by helping out other countries. You know, it's kind of like the space station, right? The space station has different scientists from all over the world. They're working out there, yet they're fighting, and they can't agree on policy, but the scientists agree. Cloak and dagger, right? That's what it's like, cloak and dagger, a ruse. 
kind of like a rack. All the weaponry underneath the ground and the aircraft and the machinery and everybody's saying, well, we don't need to go into Iraq. Are you kidding? But Iraq is too late. This is what we're seeing. And the weather, weather phenomena is the start of this. But water is going to go missing all over the globe, just so you know. Not just the U.S. and California, but all over the globe. It's the only way to get those bases prepared. Now, each country has its own policies and recommendations as to how to prepare these bases and occupy them. You know how long of a process it takes to actually man underground bases? That's a 15-year process, just so you know. It's not something they think about and then do it the next day. It would take, realistically, about 15 years. There are certain doors, pressure doors you have to have. Oxygen levels, atmospheric levels, and everything else have to be maintained. A lot of logistic operations would have to take place. Manufacturing and uh, things of that nature would be diverted down to the bases to sustain them for it however many years they need to function by then people would start missing how could an official go missing and everybody's paying attention well you divert their attention through drama and television so you give them these weird stories and nobody cares about it except for the populace and everybody else does their thing and they're prepared so when you see uh, the naval ships begin to move away from North America well then you know what's happening but the only way to protect from the sun's troubles is to go underground. You have to go underground to escape the radiation because a lot of things will be irradiated, like a microwave. And because it's sporadic, there's, it's, it's very difficult to determine where the holes are gonna pop up next. So just imagine a world you live in with holes that just pop out of nowhere and the sun's rays go right through the holes, and you don't know where they're gonna where they're gonna show up at. And so this takes preparation, lots of preparation. Compile that with people problems and atmospheric issues and things coming from outside of this solar system. Well, then you have real trouble, right? But that time that uh, we live in and occupy with the weather phenomena, the increased temperatures. The higher winds, the jet stream lowering itself, atmospheric compression, the heat from the ionosphere actually being felt. You know, we're in for a doozy of a time if you belong to the wrong side. You see, I still believe in the miraculous side of our Lord. You can say you're going to suffer all day. No man can qualify their own suffering in the end unless they go out and make themselves suffer. But the Lord is going to dictate the ending for his children. We dictate whose side we're on today. Not one of us knows the future in our own fates. We don't know that unless we've rejected him fully. And that's pretty hard to do. We don't know that. We don't know what the Lord will do. But I know sometimes I've seen people I've experienced wounds myself that should have been painful and they were not. I've had colds that hurt worse than some of the injuries I had. That's why I always say you don't know what the Lord will do. You just don't know. Somebody put your head on a chopping block he could take you well before they ever put your head on there. Confess him one too many, one too many times and you don't experience the head chopping. But because you were willing to go to the end, he took you from that body. And you go to dwell with him and your body's left there. They think they're doing God a service by chopping your head off, but you're long gone. How about that? We underestimate God. We put God in a box based on what we think he will do, based on our own comprehension. We can't do that. He does above and beyond all that we can ask of him. We don't know all of his thoughts. or what he, We know what he has given us. That's what we know. 
But we know by reading the scriptures, he has preserved certain things to himself. We know Jesus told the disciples, it's not for you to know what God has reserved for himself to know. You're sitting there worried about pain and getting your head chopped off and this, that, and the other. I, I'll tell you what. Here's what you do. Concentrate on doing the work of the Lord today. Even if, it, if you get to that moment, don't contemplate on the pain and all this other stuff and discomfort. Contemplate on doing this work. How can you reach somebody even in that time? How would you receive the Lord's instruction? If you were taken to prison, locked away in a camp or something like that, you need to concentrate on him. The Bible already told us that some of us would be in that predicament. Some of us won't. Not everybody was a martyr. It's foolish to assume that everybody's going to be a martyr. It really is. That means everybody's not going to get their head chopped off. To be a martyr is to die for the word of your testimony, right? To be killed. Everybody's not appointed to be a martyr. So it's kind of a fallacy if I were to tell you that you're going to go through everything I go through. That wouldn't be a true statement because I don't know that. I don't know that. We know that collectively the body of Christ has to go through some things. But we also know that some of us won't be here. And we know that some of us will. But that should never be a point of argument and or a contention. So the best advice during these times is, hey, keep your eyes on the truth, even in times of adversity. The Lord will never leave you nor forsake you. He's with you all the way. Even with the weather phenomena happening, you need to understand, well, this, this has to take place or it wouldn't take place. But I need to keep my mind stayed on the truth of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't let fear enter your heart. Fear enters when you begin to question if God is going to show up in your life or not. That's when fear enters because you become unsure. Well, I don't know if the Lord's going to let me do. Well, see, you're preoccupied with the future again. Don't get yourself preoccupied with the future, but do what you can do today. Always be prepared, but none of us can actually say that we're ready. You can prepare for anything. But your state of readiness can be very high. But when you get in that predicament, well, that's when you know what it feels like. You don't know what it feels like until you have been immersed in that predicament. But we have to be honest with the Lord and open with the Lord. We have to get rid of these fears. And you don't get rid of a fear by tricking everybody else into thinking you don't have that fear in the first place. And you don't defend your fears. Fear is, is a spirit that God did not give us. How many know that fear is a spirit? Didn't it, wasn't it written that God did not give us the spirit of fear? That tells us that fear is a spirit. And if it is a spirit, an entity is behind it. The spirit of fear. When you're fearful, it's like an energy coursing through your body that's highly negative. It makes you stop moving and everything else. You can't think straight. Worry enters in. Fear comes with a lot of garbage. God didn't give us a spirit of fear, so it's coming from somewhere else. So if it's in you and we begin to, if, if you confess that to somebody else, then that spirit can be purged from you. Most fear is, is not well-founded. Fear is a product of, of uh, not comprehending the unknown. There's no certain outcome. You see, over the course of time, we found comfort in knowing the outcome of something. That's our comfort. That's a mistake, too. Wouldn't it be awesome if you could have joy in your life, not knowing the outcome to anything? The only thing that you know is Jesus is Lord, and that would be sufficient. You would have no change on you. You could operate because you're not so focused on the future and so occupied by the calamitous things that were prophesied. Right? But then rather you would operate today knowing those things are coming, but having all trust in your Father, not being under the spirit of fear. 
Not being under the spirit of fear changes your pain. Like if, if you have an injury, I notice that fear can make the pain worse. You get anxious, anxiety, and everything else. Well, without fear, all that goes away. But we become accustomed to having comfort in knowing the outcome of circumstances. And when we don't know the outcome of it, what do we do? Worry. We're fearful about the situation. All of a sudden, we want to go home. We don't want to be here simply because we can't see the future. We're not here to be psychics and to know the future. We're here to trust the Lord today. To do what he's asking of us to do today, and the only way to hear him is to silence the world out of your mind. But if you're preoccupied with tomorrow, how can you hear the Lord today? You're going to be preoccupied with something else, with your own plan. You know how many people are preoccupied with their own plans? So much so they can't hear anything the Lord is saying. In fact, if a Bible scripture goes outside of their plans, they'll say false teacher, false prophet, because it's outside of their plans. The problem is they their plans are taking precedence over God's will and God's predestination for their life. That's the problem. By the way, the Lord's children don't make a habit of calling people false prophets. We make a habit of praying for people. The same people that say any demon can be cast out, they're the same ones that will say false prophet. And instead of them doing the right thing, going to the person, having an eye for their full deliverance, they're hollering false prophets over who are they. All they're doing is fault finding. God didn't call us to be fault finders. And the only time we really say a person is a false prophet is when what they're saying doesn't line up with our plans. And that's something. Who's behind that? Is that not a confusing situation? Well, we know who the author of confusion is, don't we? That's Satan himself. That's Lucifer. People don't even comprehend what a false prophet is. False prophets were defined in the word of God. So were those of an antichrist spirit. But people will holler false doctrine, everything else. Yet they're the same ones. They say, well, just lay your hands on someone and rebuke the demon. And the person can be free and come back to Christ. But don't you say anything outside of their planning. Because you're going to be the target of them. They do this all the time. And it's not that they're bad people either. But they too need to see the truth of what's happening. They need to see what's going on around them. They need to focus on today. But we do find comfort in having some sort of resolve and knowing parts of the future, knowing the outcome of a situation when we don't know it, we're fearful, we worry and do everything else. Once we get past that, the spirit of fear won't function within us. And we'll be good to go. We will. Folks, it is 6.57. The weather phenomena is not going to subside. You see, after the water events, well, we're going to have water events, winds, and dryness. But the oceans are going to give people the most problems. And the upper atmospheres are going to do the rest. But the oceans are warming up. You know what happens when the oceans warm up, ladies and gentlemen? More moisture in the atmosphere. What does that mean? You know where high winds come from? High winds come from a low pressure and a high pressure. Getting crammed together. And you have what's called isobars in between, right? Too much stuff in the atmosphere, not enough stuff to move. You have a lot more wind and energy in the atmosphere. Translates by way of wind. And when it starts hitting the oceans, it's going to be very difficult to traverse the oceans by any type of boat unless you're in a submarine because the waves are going to be simply too high continuously. Can you imagine that? A world where the oceans are dangerous. Nobody's taking a cruise ship anywhere because the waves are unpredictable. But as the oceans continue to heat, the atmosphere is going to pick up more and more moisture. Before you know it, we're going to be surrounded by storm clouds. 
misty conditions all throughout the earth. Certain parts which have ozone issues will have zero humidity, near zero humidity with incredible heat. It's going to dry up. It's going to cause famines. The animal life will begin to die because plant life will die. This weather phenomenon will likely last for years. So it's only beginning. That's what the weather is going to be like. But we'll keep you posted and updated. Certainly for those living on the East Coast. Again, Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania. There are some severe storms headed for Pennsylvania right now. Low pressure system is moving. It's crawling. Just imagine this. Imagine a thunderstorm that stretches from Texas to Maine. One thunderstorm. Just imagine this. One thunderstorm that stretches from Texas to Maine, and it's not a hurricane, but a a low-pressure system that's unimpeded by any high-pressure systems anywhere. This this is a type of phenomenon that we're going to see coming. With all this moisture from the oceans heating up, getting locked into the atmosphere, we're looking at rain events that uh, we've just not seen in recorded history. In recent recorded history... You know, this this time and age that we live in is going to be worse than when God destroyed the earth by the flood. Are you guys aware of this? The time we are about to occupy is a time like no other, and all of us need our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I encourage you today to hear him by silencing the world. Don't spend your time on boasting, but understand that we're his children, and all children need their parents, right? We need our Father in heaven. But to make it up in your minds now to complete what you need to complete, no matter what it looks like, you've got to stop trusting what you see with your eyes and depend on those things that you see with your spiritual eyes. We can't live in an illusion or a bubble. And all things happen for a reason, and we're able to see it. Things that happen on television that we learn about, why do we learn about them? Is it for our deception? Or is it so that we too can stay awake and remember that our Father is our Father? Life and death, our our death, we should be preoccupied with our own death. But we need to understand that life is eternal for us. Therefore, we must endure until the end. And the same shall be saved. But he'll never leave us nor forsake us ever so don't trust what you see trust the Lord trust the spiritual promises he's giving you and understand that you are spirit you're spirit you're in the flesh but you are spirit that's why you have eternal life folks I'm gonna run God bless each and every one of you We shall, now that Mixler is working, I'm sure. And the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to earth, and he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and from the shaft rose smoke, like the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft. Then from the smoke came locusts on the earth, and they were given power like the power of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any green plant or any tree, but only those people who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were allowed to torment them for five months, but not to kill them. And their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings someone. And in those days, people will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. They have as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek, he is called Apollyon. The first woe has passed. Behold, two woes are still to come. 
And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. I was in prayer during the night and I got, um, I got the vision of this Abaddon and it was horrific. Then in the morning, uh, later on uh, that morning, I got the um, actual prophecy. I, I was hearing it, parts of it for a few days. Prepare for the day of Abaddon. He shall rise from beneath the earth, smoke shall ascend to the heavens. He shall be accompanied by his army of demons. He will have power to cause much pain and suffering, but not the power of death. He shall make men flee in horror, and they will not escape this torment and pain. The army and its king of the locusts shall remain among the unrepentant for five months. Turn from your evil ways, you men of the earth. I am a just God and a forgiving God. Return to me and escape the wrath to come. All those that seek me with a repentant heart will enter in. Come as time moves quickly and the days grow short. Uh, about something is really good topic you had today concerning this, uh, the, the urgency that we're in and concerning CERN not so much for the machinery, but the intent. And um, this probably won't be long enough to say it, but there's a film uh, called Symmetry. To give you an idea of this film, it was made for, specifically for CERN. It's also a message. Here's one of the captions in the film that people will find in the film as it's released. It will ultimately ask if one loves the particle more than himself and then they ask would you become one with the particle Riddle. yeah and so i i, I uh, of course it would take a little more time to uh, well, but that's one of the yeah, captains in the film go ahead the name of the film you say is symmetry is that with a c symmetry s-y-m-m-e-t-r-y they allowed this to be filmed inside of cern so it's not, uh, you know, it's not just, it's not just an ordinary film. It, it's more of an intention. The scientists were very uh, collaborative in this film. And they did uh, work and help produce this film. And it was, it, it has an intent. It has an announcement. If a, if a person, and it's not conspiracy theory, this is how science seems to edify itself. But um, they have an intent here, uh, something very real, something, uh, yeah. And now they're releasing that at the same time the CERN is being fired up. Yeah, it's in that neighborhood. CERN itself, everybody knows about CERN, it's a particle accelerator. And they've already found the Higgs boson particle, which is accompanied, which in, within that field, which is a field that is, the other realm we can't see, that's in fact evidence that that realm exists. What they're looking for now is what powers all the fields, which is dark matter. It is the, they call it the God particle. Now, Pastor, it is, it is my opinion, uh, my professional opinion that they are going to discover this particle. And there's nothing that will prohibit them from doing so. CERN is actually in its startup phases at the moment uh, because they'll be doing checks and rechecks. Um, there are some byproducts of CERN, of course, that uh, people will likely experience. That's not conspiracy. Again, that's a fact. And um, what do you mean by byproducts? Are well, they talking about uh, demons and demonic entities and, and pastors. Or are you talking about pressure on you know, the if it were just demons, if it were just demons, right, um, because we've been given power over them, that would be one thing. But one of the problems with CERN is that it directly affects the psyche of everybody. Uh, you were talking about ISIS and the holes in the Arctic. When CERN started up, uh, when they did one of the experiments in 2012, that's also the time that al-Baghdadi moved and shifted from being one entity to another in Syria. Beheadings were taking place, massive beheadings that they didn't tell the public, began spontaneously. Minute to him.
Now the protons are ready to collide in the detectors. A steering magnet finally brings them to a collision course. The total energy of two protons colliding in the LHC is 14 tera electron volts and reproduces similar states to moments after the Big Bang. Particle tracks from these collisions will be analysed by computers connected to the detectors and it's hoped these tracks will give a new insight into the very birth of our universe. How our universe has evolved, what governs its behaviour today and where it's going in the future. It did in fact unleash something in the world. The effects that CERN has on the brain are measurable. They're measurable effects. That's why it's underground so far. Are you aware that you have awakened a lot of people to the dangers of the CERN LHC and how does this feel? Uh, it's nothing to feel comfortable about. Now here's one of the things about this. This antimatter is also called dark matter. And dark matter has energy attached to it. And the energy affects people. It affects them and remember, when you produce antimatter, you've got to contain it. Because if you don't contain it, you've got to contain it. That's the biggest problem, containing it. Because if you don't contain it, it just goes wild. But they do know this. From what they've experienced so far, it has an effect on people. Dark matter has an effect on people. It causes some people to go screaming mad. It controls people. It is an enormously powerful thing. It's pulling something out of hell that you don't want any part to do with and turning it loose. You have to remember our world is made up of matter. The antimatter is what we can't see, what we can't touch, what we can't feel, though we interact with it every day. A lot of people like to think of antimatter as the other dimension, which is the opposite of this dimension. It's an inconceivable place that is hostile inherently. It's not under control, it's very hostile. So there's a physical effect to the spiritual world in antimatter. And often, demonic entities and all these other paranormal things are attracted to antimatter. For every gram of antimatter that's produced and then it's bought into this world when they produce it, it attracts things from another dimension coming here because everything is balanced to the uh, subject of Lucifer in the spiritual sense because God gives everything balance. Everything has balance. There is dark, there is light, there is good, there is bad. They, everything has balance. CERN has yielded so many results and gave a true definition of paranormal activity. It's just, it's beyond me that a lot of people cannot get this through the truth of the word. They, they can't. Antimatter is being pulled out of nowhere, out of this other dimension, which is nowhere but everywhere. In consequence to that, they found out antimatter has a specific type of energy signature that they can, in fact, detect. This is how they, uh, it's part of the process of pulling it out. Well, as it comes to find out, some of the not so good consequences of this process has to do with the human psyche. There's just something weird about CERN. CERN's Large Hadron Collider is the world's largest particle accelerator. In fact, it's the largest machine on Earth. Now they tell us that they're seeking answers to some of the deepest mysteries of time and space. But some people believe that CERN is actually the key to the abyss to the bottomless pit. And what they're going to do with CERN is allow the beast to rise from the abyss. They tell us that the idea is to recreate the circumstances right after the so-called Big Bang, or the beginning of the universe. They also claim to have already discovered the God Particle. But what's really going on with CERN? Operatic dance performance filmed inside CERN. 
Symmetry tells the story of a CERN researcher who rediscovers love through the song and dance of the infinite cosmos. But what's really going on with CERN? So isn't it interesting that right around the time that CERN is about to activate the Large Hadron Collider once again, we find this what seems to be strange ritual taking place actually inside of CERN. Let's take another look at this. Symmetry is an operatic sci-fi dance performance based on the work being performed at CERN. It follows Lucas, played by the film's choreographer, Lucas Timilek, a CERN physicist hard at work using the LHC to search for the smallest particle in existence when a ghostly woman, played by soprano Claron McFadden, appears. I want to show you a little bit of this footage. You can decide for yourself. Now this right here is from the very beginning of the video and I thought it was interesting because right here in the very beginning we find Saturn's ring. Check this out. In the search for the smallest particle. Boom. And now check this out. Watch the way these people are dancing. It's also interesting to note that in between the different segments of this short video, they like to keep showing us Saturn's rings. Check this part out, I thought it was interesting as well. Now they're about to jump over to a new scene and then watch the guy's cheek, and then there's that guy in the black right behind him. Now watch. Once again, just keep in mind that there is a very, very common belief that CERN, what they're doing, that these people are actually in league with the fallen angels, or with the satanic system itself, the devil himself, the beast system, or the Illuminati, you could even say. All this stuff is tied in together. This is really heavy stuff, and I find it amazing the things they're kind of showing us just in this short video, or this ritual that they performed at CERN. So just considering the possibility that that's actually what they're doing, that they are trying to open up the pit, that we are really in those times, those prophetic times, that it's time to unleash the beast, right? Then man, this imagery is interesting, isn't it? So look at this. Just watch. It's open, right? Here it comes. Anyway, it's interesting. It goes right here. Got the lady in white inside of the magic circle. You got the guy dressed in black walking outside of it. So once again, we have that symbol of the dark and the light. This time the light is the lady in white, and she's inside of a magic circle, with the man in black walking around the edges. There was the ring again, right? Look, here it comes. Gates open. Boom. Here they come, right? Fallen angels, the devil himself. They're on the way. The Vatican's secret plan for welcoming in an alien god with a small g. These powers and principalities that Paul writes about in Ephesians 6, these, these demonic forces, powers and principalities, these, these demonic forces have seeded this idea into the world, so we are primed and ready for a deception. Okay, but what, what makes you think the Vatican has planned to announce this? Well, you know, they're having astrobiology conferences. They, they've made it intellectually virtuous to believe in these extraterrestrials. Their writings coming out of their theologians have pretty much made the argument that if you don't believe in extraterrestrials, then that is actually the heresy. You talk about uh, that the Vatican is going to reevaluate their position on basic Christianity. What do you mean by that? Well, their theologians have written that they think that these entities will be evangelizing us so that we would have to modify our beliefs according to their revelation. Uh, we also got access to top astronomers that work in Rome including um, an astronomer by the name of Guy Cosmonaldo. He's one of the top astronomers for the Vatican. What, what was the major thing you got from you had interview with him? Oh, well, two major things. One, uh, he says um, without apology that very soon the nations of the world are going to look to the aliens for their salvation. The, the idea that we are soon to be visited by an alien savior from another world is going to affect Christian belief. There is a professor for the Pope's uh, 
uh, University in Rome. And uh, uh, he is a very highly respected intellectual. Uh, his last name is Tanzniti. And he has written a paper now in which he is saying that very soon, not, a, not right in the beginning, we won't have to um, deny our Christian faith in the beginning. But there is information coming from another world, and once it is confirmed, it is going to require a rereading of the gospel as we know it. Rereading of the gospel as we know it. And that's the kind of information that we are receiving from the highest levels of Vatican intelligentsia. Where's this headed, in your opinion, after all this research? I think it's headed towards an imminent great deception. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. While people are saying, peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly, as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light, and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. So this Large Hadron Collider was started up. You say, what in the world does something like that have to do with me and the Bible? It has a lot to do with you and the Bible. I cannot and will not attempt to speak as a physicist. It would make me look like a fool. My purpose is to try to be a liaison between them and you is to try to take what's going on in that collider and break it down to where I can understand it and I can give it out so you can understand it to where it makes an application to your life and to this world as we know it today. For what is happening in that collider is an astounding thing. So I want to read something to you this morning from what's called a theoretical physicist. This man, his name is Stephen Hawking. He's well known throughout the world. Anyone that has anything to do with nuclear energy or has anything to do with physics knows this man and he is one that some rate even on the level of Einstein and uh, of that level and so I'm going to read you what this man has to say about what's happening right now in CERN Switzerland listen carefully these are the words of Stephen Hawking <laughs> recently warned the reactivation in March of CERN's large Hadron Collider could pose grave dangers to our planet. The ultimate reality, check, we are warned. Hawking has come straight out and said, the God particle, and this is what you've heard referred to time and again as the Higgs boson particle, the God particle found by CERN could destroy the universe. Now let that settle in. This man is an atheist, and he says there is no God. Yet he says that what's happening right now in CERN, Switzerland, has the potential to destroy the universe. Lucifer lives in the antimatter. He lives in a different frequency or a different dimension, a spiritual world, a spiritual realm. But he comes in to contact us. He will try to manipulate you. He will try to tempt you by manipulating your brain. This is why the Bible tells us to put on the whole armor of God. And Apostle Paul says, the helmet of salvation. Another